morning, good morning. It's wonderful to see everybody. Before you sit down, there's a bunch of folks here today. If you guys could do a little shuffle, shuffle inward to free up some seats on the end. Some of y'all can't do it uh, because there's not availability, but emotionally, I need you to do it either way, okay? Thank you guys, man. I'm so, this is so excited. Last week, so many of y'all came that we added chairs and we need to add more chairs. So that's an exciting thing. Thank you for wanting to be a part of what's happening here on Sunday mornings. My name's TC. I'm one of the pastors on the team here at The Point. And you can see there's distraction behind me because we're doing something a little different today. But before we dive into what we're doing today, I want to give you guys an update a little over a month and a half ago, I shared with you guys our dream to try and, and resource our facility a little bit more so we can try and, and shine our light a little brighter in our city, shine the light of Christ a little brighter in the city. And that would require us to, to update things. Our building was getting, getting a little old, and so you can see some of those things have already begun. We've painted in the lobby. This room's gonna get a fresh coat of paint in here. <coughs> the kids' wing. Uh, we already have the live stream going good, which if you haven't checked out the live stream yet, like, good job coming to church. But if you ever can't be here in person, check out the live stream. It's, it, it's doing really, really good. Speaking of live stream, hello, everybody on the stream. Thanks for joining us today online. But uh, anyway, so I shared with you guys all those things. We were calling it the greatest gift campaign, all the different things uh, that we're wanting to do to try and make our facility, our, our building, even more welcoming as people are coming in. And we shared that the need to make that happen would be about $250,000. That's you know not a small chunk of change. It's pretty big, but you guys have been generous. You guys have been participating. You guys have been a part of this. And so far, we have raised two. $231,000. So great job, guys. That's amazing. Thank you so much for partnering with us, for trusting us. You've trusted God, but you've also trusted this team, and we are so grateful. Thank you. If you have wanted to be a part of it and have not yet, you can still check it out online. That option, the Greatest Gift Campaign Fund, will remain open for another month or two, so you can be a part of that if you like. But that's the update. I'm really excited about that. I hope you guys are excited about that too. But we, in this week, week two of our series, Doubting God, I wanted us to spend some time just talking about doubt. We all have doubt. We all deal with doubt in our lives, just as Pastor Todd last week talked about it. It's natural. It happens. But each of us kind of have a different relationship with doubt. It impacts us different ways. We begin doubting because of different circumstances. The way that we process it can be different. And so I wanted this week for us to get together a, a fantastic and beautiful panel of people Yes, you give it up. We got Pastor Todd in Orlando and Deanna up here. You've seen all these guys on stage doing different things, but, uh, but I wanted to bring these guys together so we can all share our own experience, our own journey with doubt, and hopefully give you some handles, some hope, some resources as you navigate your own questions of how you can come through doubt stronger and closer to God. And so, um, so I, we'll probably kick that off with this important first question, which is just, what, what comes to mind when you think of doubt? Well, a, a first is Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello is the first thing. Uh, but other than that would be skepticism, uh, the fear, something that I can't do. Um, you know, trying to like learn to ride a bike again, like when I was saying last week. It's just, I had the doubts. Uh, I, didn't, I couldn't do it. So that would creep in. Uh, to me, it would be the fear. Uh, for me, it'd be uh, doubt in comparison, uh, where I'd always compare uh, myself or to someone else, you know, uh, generally a, another man, I'll look at him and go, I'll oh, see, I, I'm not as tall as him. I'm not as built as him. I don't have the money that he has. And, and in my mind that translated to then I'm not good enough. You know? Yeah. Like I, like you have so much more hair than me. And so I'm now right. I'm feeling hey, inadequate. Me and Todd combined. Yeah. Well, Hey, you know, Gosh. get your life together. Really. <laughs> Uh, doubt for me, when it, I'm, I'm kind of in the same vein. I was thinking about No Doubt, the old 90s band with Gwen Stefani. Yeah, mm -hmm. Y'all showing your age with me. But uh, doubt, doubt for me is a lack of trust. If I don't trust you, if I doubt what you're saying, I just don't trust you. I don't quite have that level of trust with you. So that, that's... Well, and Deanna, you've said, you know, I've talked before, and there was a thing you, when you say, if you have a doubt, don't. 
Yes, I live my life by that motto. If I have a doubt, if I, if I have a doubt about something I'm wearing or something that I'm about to do, I usually don't. It's not that it means that I, I'm not a risk taker, okay? But I just, I don't do risque things. If I have a little bit of a doubt, I just don't do it. It's good. <laughs> so uh, today, you know, we're, we're walking through doubt. And, and, you know, as you can even see, a lot of, a lot of doubt seems to come from this place of, of, of a heaviness, of uh, challenge, of concern. But I, I, wanna, I want us to broaden our definition of doubt to, to, or maybe simplify it, to be just questioning. Right, we can ask questions, and, the, and the, these questions can come as a result of a lack of trust, of a, of a result of comparison, of a result of fear. But we can also have doubt that can lead to something positive that we can question uh, in a in a hope to understand better. Um, and so today, I mean, we could go through, like, we could spend the next six years talking about all the different things we can doubt and the people we can doubt and the organizations we can doubt. I mean, like, I doubt even, like, when I go and get food at McDonald's. Is that real food? I don't know if that's yes, chicken. Yes, it is. It's real chicken. It's real chicken. It's yeah. real chicken parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, somebody preach. Come know. on. Please. There's some restaurants that I doubt that more than others, but I'm okay with it. Like, it tastes good whether it's real chicken or not, but I doubt the legitimacy. We don't doubt that. We okay, do. well, you guys don't. I still question, all right? We're all at a different place with our doubts. So anyways, we can, we can talk about a lot of things, but we want to zero in partly because it's on the screen, so we have to talk about doubting God, but also because I would wager that out of all the things and relationships and people in the world that God is probably the most common denominator of our doubts, that we most commonly as people doubt God, God's existence, doubt God's power, doubt God's love and care. And, and so we want to spend a little time talking about our own relationship with that, our own doubts. And so if you guys could, as we're talking about doubting God, can, can you share a, a season that you've had doubt in your relationship with God? Yeah, I've had uh, two. One, when I was uh, 11 years old, was October 30th, 1981, uh, my stepbrother, who was older than me, was killed in an accident. He was married for three weeks, went head on with the semi, and died. And I was like, you know, I, I was raised in the church, and my mom took me to church every week. We did that, got baptized. But I just didn't understand why, why would God take a brother, take a son, take a husband uh, in that fashion? And so at that age, I began to question, is there God? Uh, and then secondly would be when I was in my uh, early 20s, going through a divorce, raising a two-year-old son, um, understanding, trying to figure out why would God allow this to happen. And, and I was trying to fill my life with so many things, and just I had walked away, but I, I doubted him, and so I, I tried to do it on my own. Uh, for me, um, when I was younger, you know, my mom would take us to church. Well, yeah, me to church. and take me to church all the time, and we grew up in a Baptist church, and I say grew up because that's just where we were, and then people would ask me, you know, as I got a little older, well, um, what denomination are you? And I would say, I, I don't claim one per se because I had seen in this church and this church and this church, though it was all supposed to be about God, they were all saying different things, so I didn't want to go, well, that's me right there, you know what I mean? So, I'm, uh, so it wasn't until I decided to go after God for myself you know, in 2010, and then it switched from the doubt of, is God real, to, okay, can God really do those things that he says in his word in my life? Mm. Yeah. I've had two seasons in my life where I've doubted God's goodness or God's existence. The first one was, uh, I was married for six years previously to my husband, Josh, uh, and uh, he, we had had a, just a rough marriage for those six years. And then he came and he found the Lord. And then six months later, he died. And I was pregnant with our second kiddo. Our daughter was three years old at the time. And I just remember thinking, you know, all this time that we were married, I really wanted to have a, a man who followed God and who loved Jesus. And then finally he does and then he dies. That feels wrong, God. That doesn't seem to line up with the plans that I have for myself. So that was definitely a hard season of uh, learning to trust and having faith. And then another one was when, um, man, postpartum depression was really hard for me in, uh, my, after my fourth kiddo. And I, I doubted God's existence. I doubted my own existence on this earth. I, I uh, contemplated suicide and I, I just, I doubted it all. I had lots of things going on in my heart and mind at the time. So those are two very poignant places in my life that, um, 
doubt existed for sure. And guys, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it, the reality is, is that we often face challenging circumstances and that is where the questions begin to emerge about God, right? I mean, I, I can list plenty of times too that um, I don't think, uh, you know, I accepted Christ when I was four. And so I don't think I've ever like really had space in my life to not, like I, he's just always been in my mind that God's always been there. But there's definitely been seasons of me doubting, um, do I wanna follow him? Does he care about me? Where I've, you know, moved my family to be a part of what we believe God was doing in an area and it was just challenging and difficult and um, people didn't respond and care. Like it was just, it was hard. And so it made you start, it made me start going, well, God, does obeying you mean that things are just hard all the time? And so doubts, doubts can creep into it, especially when things are challenging. But I'll tell you this as well. Like I said, I accepted Christ when I was four um, and I grew up in church, grew up in a Christian home. I was leading small groups in seventh grade, like all, all these kinds of things. And uh, whenever I graduated and went off to college, like all my buddies and all my friends that uh, had been in church with me got to college and like, they went crazy, man. Like, it was like, oh my goodness, like, what, we went to church together and you are acting like you don't know nothing about God. And that's like super, con I was going to a Christian school, man. The things I saw at that Christian school, I was like, oh my goodness, what's the non-Christian school look like? Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's this season where you, people step out of what they have known and it's time to choose what you want for yourself. And so I was faced with this opportunity. Like I, I've grown up in church. It's what my family believed. It's what I have followed to this point. But is this really what I'm gonna choose for myself? And so what I chose to do with these doubts, with these questions was I got my Bible out and I started for some reason in Philippians chapter one and I got out a, a, a notebook and just wrote down every single verse uh, what it meant to me, what, what I saw God do in my life through that verse, and what I would do differently based on that verse. And it was incredible as I was doing that, that it felt like God was telling me the story of his activity in my life. And I was able to see through the promises that God made, through the things that he said, the realities of his presence in my life. And so my doubts and my questions, they were not the result of something traumatic, although some of the things that I saw my friends doing might, tra might have traumatized me a little bit. But, um, but it was just me asking questions and wanting to research and understand, is this something that is livable? Is this something that is reliable? Is this something that is real? And I believe that those questions led me to a much stronger place in my relationship with God because I took the time to research and understand. But doubt can uh, have different outcomes. Now, when we start asking questions, I mean, there's some questions, there's some people that get further away from God and there's some people that get closer. So what, what are some of the things maybe that, that cause that doubt in the first place? I think, I think our, you know, our experiences and things and how we learn to deal with things that happen in our lives, then when someone says, well, you, you ought to trust God, so now it's a, a battle between what you have always known to do inside. Like, okay, well, this is how I handle this person. If someone does me wrong, this is how I, I've known to handle them. But then now it's a choice, right, to go, I can handle it this way. Or I have to let go of that and trust that God is going to take care of it. I know you say he's going to fight my battles, but that doesn't feel as good in the moment than me just cussing somebody out. You know what I mean? Right, right. Well, it's not, and, and that's, what, that's what I like to talk about sometimes. It's like, when we, when we say a Christianese term, it's like, lay it at the feet of Jesus. Have y'all heard that before? And then, and then what, is, what the heckin' does that look like? <laughs> like, what does that actually look like? But, but to your point, too, I think what causes doubt is, I don't know if, I, I'm probably alone in this, but I never doubt God's goodness when I'm having a season of good things happen. I'm not over here, woe is me, and doubting God when my life is blessed, when I have food on the table, when my bills are paid. I don't doubt goodness of God or even God's existence, but woe is me when the, when the crap hits the fan, yeah. right? Then I start doubting God. Then I start doubting his existence. I doubt his love for me. I doubt his care for me, his provision for me, all the things. So I think when it's like when things happen, when we're in an emotional crisis, when, 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 I don't know, when trauma happens, I feel like is when we start to have doubt in our life. I was remembering, it's trouble, transition, tragedy, 
those kind of times. Okay, with your teens. That's right. That's when I. It's when we start to doubt. Like you said, we don't do it when things are going good. No. Wake up in the morning, you got some snow on the ground, you got canceled school, it's you're so sitting nice. at home doing something, sipping playing on your video. Coffee. Yeah, sipping you know? your coffee, getting on PlayStation, <laughs> playing. Everything's yeah. good. But as soon as something happens, you get a phone call that someone passed away, there's that trouble, that transition, that tragedy, then you start to wonder, is God real? Why didn't he answer that prayer? Yes. What's going on? Why do I have cancer? Uh, yeah. It's just those times that it really, it really affects you. I, I was going to say, I think that's why it's important, you know, when the Bible says to meditate on the word day and night, right? So in those good times, you know, we're not trust, we're, we're not doubting God or whatever, but in those times when nothing's happening, if we're staying um, in his word and, and really getting it in our hearts of his nature and how he deals with the thing, when that situation comes, because it will, things happen in our lives all the time, then it's not an unrealistic expectation you know what I mean? You're not, you're, you're, you, if, if, you, if you're not in his word and not keeping his mind stayed on your heart, something happens and you're like, God, wh- how did you let this happen? How did you, well, why aren't you providing the way that you, you know, meanwhile, you know what I mean? So I think it's just, it can be just a, 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 a unrealistic, you know, expectation of who God is and his role in our lives. Yes, I, I would say that most commonly it is Todd's list of T's, typhoons and whatever was on the list of T's. Ticks. We got ticks. No one likes yeah, the ticks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, that, that trauma, difficulty, transitions, um, tragedy. I'm with you now. I got it. I got it. Um, that, that tends to be it. But I, I think the cause of doubt is whenever we receive new information that is not compatible with what we have believed or understood to that point. That's what generates the doubt because we've lived our life with these beliefs, with these understandings, and now there's something in their way that, that either proves those aren't real or doesn't fit with what we've said before. And, and that's what creates this, this, this kind of faith crisis Right, and that not just in God, but in everything, but specifically with God. Whenever we think one way of God or expect something of God, and then life goes away that that doesn't fit with what we expected, then it really begins to make us question: Is He there? And I think that questions are a good thing. I think asking questions of God is good, but sometimes we're not in the place that we're even ready for the answers because of what we expect from Him. I mean, Orlando brought up uh, when we rehearsed this uh, a couple nights ago. See, we prepare. We even sat around and talked about all this stuff in advance, and still chaos ensues. But anyways, uh, the other night we were sitting around, and we were talking uh, afterwards, and Orlando brought up uh, Judas, how Judas was there with Jesus, right? Judas was one of Jesus' 12 closest followers. He got to see it all. He got to be there whenever Jesus pulled out the sack lunch and fed 5,000 plus people. He got to be there when Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead. He got to be there when Jesus turned water to wine. He saw it all, right? And so I don't think there was any doubt in Judas his mind that Jesus was special. And you can't spend time with somebody like that and think, no, that's just a normal dude. I have never been hanging out with my boys and somebody came back to life. <laughs> Did not happen, right? But yet Judas still chose to betray him. Why? Well, I think Judas did not believe that Jesus was God because Jesus wasn't doing what Judas wanted God to do that Judas would have been an Israelite that wanted to be, wanted the Messiah, the Savior to come and liberate Israel from Roman oppression. He thought that if that was, if Jesus was the guy, that Judas was gonna be one of the 12 people getting to run this new world power. He had all these expectations. And even though Jesus was healing people and giving people hope and bring in this new standard of how to live your life and care for people and all this compassion, that's not what Judas wanted. Therefore, he could not see who God really was. I think we do the exact same things. That we believe, well, if God is good, then I wouldn't experience this loss. Then I wouldn't experience this hurt. Then I wouldn't experience these challenges and these these difficulties in my life. And so my expectations of God make me get, begin to question if God is real or not. Yeah, it's like an like we, we talked about an equation. It's not um, God is good plus my good life equals definitely the existence of God. God is good, all the things. It's actually God is real, God is good, 
our life, we're supposed to have troubles, and yet we're supposed to surrender to him. No matter what it is, whether it's in good, whether it's in the highest mountain or the lowest valley, we still are supposed to trust and surrender. The equation, because his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Judas wanted a certain thing from Jesus, but God is way bigger than Judas's wants and desires, and he had a plan, so yeah. See, y'all thought algebra wasn't being used after high school. Algebra. There it is. Algebra. <laughs> <laughs> So I think uh, the reality is if you, if you want to believe in God or follow God, you've got to follow God, not who you expect him to be. And that's true of any relationship, right? That in, in, if you have what you thought that relationship would be when it first happened. Cody convinced me that every single one of my jokes were hilarious when we first met, right? <laughs> and she probably thought that I always brushed my teeth, wore deodorant, and never passed gas when we first met. <laughs> And so does that mean that I'm not a real person now because I had chili this week? Oh, no. Did you brush your teeth? I have brushed my teeth at least once this I week. I didn't know what that smell was until just now. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to adjust and reframe as, as we continue investigating, discovering, and learning more. And the same is true of God. God promises we like those verses where God promises that he's going to work all things together for our good. We like the, you know, the Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the promises he has to prosper me and not to harm me and give me hope for you. Sure, that's what we put on the pillows. That's what we put you know, on Instagram and all that great stuff. We don't put the verses like he promises in Peter, how you should not be surprised of trials of every kind, as if something strange has happened. We don't like when Jesus says, hey, if they have, if they have persecuted me, if they have done this to me, they will do it to you. We don't like that. But our expectations of God tells us that that shouldn't happen, even though God promises it will. And so if we want to follow God, we've got to follow who he says he is and spend time to investigate and understand. But depending on your expectations, depending on who you believe God should be to you, it might determine the outcome of your doubt. And what are some different ways that people respond to doubt, both positively and negatively? Well, people, depending on you know the circumstances that they're in, one of their responses is, to just completely turn away and turn their backs on God. Like, no, no, I didn't because because what my grandma told me, then if that was all true, then not only would I not feel this way, but that wouldn't have happened, you know? And so it's, it's I think it's important then to surround yourself with people that can, that can help encourage you and help you know that whatever you're feeling, it's okay, right? Give you space to, 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 to let that out right? God's not angry that you, that now you're, you have these doubts. You have these questions like, why, why all of a sudden is this happening? Why, why am I having turmoil in my household with my kids? They, we all, I'm, I'm raising them to the best of my ability. So if I'm supposed to be bringing them to church and it's another thing, why are they wilding out? Why are they, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so it, it can not only then, you know, have an impact on, on your kids, but on you and then the household and then now how you interact with, with people. And then they can start making you look at other folks going, you're just faking, you know, you're faking. You know what I mean? So it can change your whole perspective on other people that isn't even involved in your situation. That's what I've seen. That's good. I, I feel like what you're saying, like the doubt can drive you deep enough that you start to even doubt everything around you. Yep. Mm. Yep, definitely. And, and doubt can be positive. Uh, I know that it was the summer of 2018 in Ateo San Salvador uh, that we were uh, in a room. Uh, and I, I had given my life to the Lord in 2006. And I believed in the name of Jesus. I don't know if I really believed in the, na- in the, in the power in the name of Jesus Christ until uh, there was a gentleman that we walked into a room and he was thought he was possessed. And I was like, ah, this ain't real. This guy's just faking it. We don't, there's no such thing as spiritual warfare and, and demons and that kind of thing. Until uh, he started, his body contorted in ways I'd never seen. His eyes looked like something I'd never seen. And what came out of him was something that I'd never seen. And so as we were there praying and, and worshiping and, and singing and, and just in the nombre de Jesus, in the, in the name, in the power the name of Jesus Christ, we did this for 45 minutes. And finally, he was freed of this demon. And that was the day that my faith became tangible, that, that, that my doubt became something positive because now I realize there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And, and in those moments, just to have that, to say, wow, that is true. That is that's what's happening. And because of my doubt, God showed me there is name and the power of Jesus Christ. And I love hearing that story because he, here in the States, stateside, we have a lot of emphasis on movies and production and all the things. And whenever we hear things like demons, we kind of get a little weird, right? Like it's spiritual things. But if you guys read in Ephesians 6, like, Spiritual battles are real. And I love what you say about you had doubts about the power. We all believe in Jesus, or at least I, I hope that all of us here, but we can get to the part where you like want to start a relationship with God. We can get there. But, but if you believe in the name of Jesus versus the power of Jesus, the power in the name, I love that transfer where you went from doubt. I don't know, this is real. Oh, this doesn't feel real. And then you're going through the process and then it's like, boom, then it becomes tangible and a real story and a real testimony. So I love when you share that story. You know, it's a cool thing. Um, I just, I just, <laughs> you saying that trick remembered. So I was watching this movie one time and um, at, at the end of it, um, and it was, a, it was a horror movie, if you will. And I remember at the end of it, I was so disturbed in my in my spirit um because you know i can watch scary movies but there's a difference between a jump scare but then the the demonic side you know what i mean and at the end of this movie i was so disturbed but my immediate response inside me was you need to pray and this specific scripture like the holy spirit brought a specific scripture to my mind so that going back to like what you know what do we do in those moments when we're doubting like like in that moment I may not have been doubting but I was put in a situation where I knew this isn't right and I, I I need help in this moment and so because of me staying in the word you know and and knowing how God is I chose to run to him instead of trying to fight it on, on in my own mind because that never works a horror movie so scary you had to go open your Bible and pray. <laughs> okay. By okay. Wes Craven. <laughs> so I, wanna, I do want to point out, like, Pastor Todd said that he had doubts about the power of the name of Jesus. Like, that could sound like you might be out there and be like, how is he a pastor and has doubts? It's because he's human. We all have quite, I will tell you guys, it's like every now and then I'll be like, man, I hope all this is real. Otherwise, I'm going to get to the end of my life. It's going to be embarrassing, right? Like, whatever, I step into whatever's after this, and it's like, well, I'm a cockroach now. Like, I'd be like, oh, that's not what I expected, right? But, and that's, even though I've spent my whole life following God, I've got so many times that I can point to the evidence of what God has done in my own life. I have researched, I logically believe in the power of Jesus and, and that Jesus is real. I don't think you check your brain at the door, but yet there's still times where I'm like, nope. And we say the word doubt, and it sounds really big and heavy, but what goes through our mind is like, it, it, in the moment is more, I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't, I mean, it's, I don't know if, it, how I'm going to pay these bills. Like, I don't know if, this, if my family's going to be okay. We have these thoughts, and we're not saying, I'm doubting God, but that's where it results from. A, 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 a question of whether or not if God really will do what he says he will do. A question of whether God really cares. And we all grapple with that. And so I, I want us to, to, to kind of wrap up with this is whenever you do have doubts, how should, how can you respond in a way that is healthy? And if someone you care about comes to you with doubt, um, that, that's very important as well. We got to be prepared to respond when people come with doubts. What, what's a way that we can respond to that in a way that is constructive and helpful rather than scaring somebody further away from God? For me, um, I've had I've had conversations with with um, friends um, that have been struggling, and for me, it's important to listen, um, not not get so consumed in how I feel about whatever they're saying, because in that moment, it really doesn't matter what I feel, um, and especially if they're doubting God and doubting his love for them, right? So the, the most important thing for me is to listen. And then I always ask at the, end of the, at the end of the conversation or sometimes in the middle, I'll say, can I, can I pray with you? And to this day, I've never had anyone say, well, no, no, I don't want that. They'll go, uh, I have had someone say, yeah, just don't make it all weird and put your hands on me and this, that, and that thing. You know, <laughs> I've had that. But, but listening is the most important thing, you know. 
It's good. Real quick, you too. Real quick. Yeah, um, I'm just, the Lord just keeps telling me about Psalm 103. So in Psalm 103, there's this beautiful verse that says, the Lord has compassion on his children. He remembers that we're, we're made of dust. And so it's not surprising to him when we come to him with doubts. He knows that we're made of dust. And he has compassion on us in such a beautiful fatherly way. And so I, I say when people have doubts, if, you, if you're in this room and you have doubts, it's okay. It's okay. And you can talk to people who, if you, uh, you want to know more about your, a car, go to a mechanic. If you want to know more about ice skating, go to a professional ice skater. If you want to know more about doing hair, go to a hairdresser. If you want to know more about God, go to somebody who uh, obviously loves God and talks about God and who has joy and carries joy in their life. I definitely wouldn't go and ask questions about God to someone who hates people and hates God. So um, or don't go to social media, go to someone. And there's 26 uh, groups in the lobby right now that are full of men and women of the, of the Lord and who love people and love God. Go join a grow group and get a community. The second thing I would say to somebody who um, is hearing about doubts, I would just say, it's okay. If people have doubts, just listen and love them. Meet them where they are and really try to understand like that you're, I'm going to take the, the pressure off of you. It's not you that's going to lead them back to the Lord. It's going to be Holy Spirit, but God is going to use you to speak truth into their life and to love them back to God. Yeah. Mine's, what are your four L's? You got my, four my four L's, L's are, are to love, to listen, to learn where they're coming from, and then to lead them to Christ. So as Orlando said, pray with them. So just love them, listen to them, learn where they're coming from and lead them to Christ. That's good. I, let, let me wrap up with this thought. First of all, if you are grappling with doubts right now that are leading you to question God, that's good because you're asking questions, right? You're not just walking through this insulated relationship where everything goes the way that you want because life will not. And so if you're able to take your questions and begin to investigate and research God, the product on the other side of seeking answers is a stronger faith. And that's what God wants from us. And so as you're asking these questions, my encouragement would be find an environment in which you can find healthy answers. A lot of times the environment we're in is what leads us to questions. People are bitter or people are angry at God. People are making you, asking you questions about your, about your faith and your beliefs that you can't answer. And, that's, and so that's not terrible to be in that environment. It's good for you to walk away. You're in a place that, that you can share your faith with people, but it makes us question when we don't have answers. So it's important to also place your environment that you can find answers from people who have been following God, for people who have answered these questions for themselves. So check out those groups, spend that. And also next week, I'll give you a teaser for next week. We had to move the panel to this week because what we were planning for this week, we had to do next week because it was too much for us to pull off this week. And Josh told me that this is like the first time we've done anything like this at the Point Church. That might be too high of an expectation to set for next week, but it's gonna be different, all right? But next week, what we're gonna be talking about is what to do, how to take these questions, healthy doubt, how doubt can be good, and actually walk through that and be closer to God. So we'll talk about that next week. The other thing I wanna talk about, they're flashing the time to wrap up. The other thing I wanna say is this, is that how you respond to people when they have doubts can either be helpful or hurtful. Right. I have a very, very close friend that we lived together before me and Cody got married. He served on my staff whenever I was a campus pastor, and he started asking questions about God, and he was going to mutual friends of ours, and they were calling me and saying, I can't believe he's starting to ask questions. I don't know why he'd do that, and it gave me time to process because when he called me and told me what he was asking, it, it, it enabled me to say, hey, man, explain that to me. You know, wh Where's this coming from? What, uh, what, what's happening here? And as we talked about it, he shared, and he said, TC, you know, I went and I talked to all these other people that I've spent my life uh, as a Christian with, and when I shared with them, I was doubting. They got angry. They, asked, they told me I couldn't ask questions. They said, why would you ever do that? And their response was frustration and anger. You're one of the only two people in my life that still treat me like the same person while I have questions. And sadly, as he's, as he's walked through this, his result has been he's not following God anymore. And I think a lot of that came out of the fear. These people loved and cared for him. How can, man, I, why would you ever ask a question like that? And the response pushed him further away. And so it's important for you to ask questions, to learn, to listen, to love. Um, because I still try and be an active person in his life that when he does call, he's got a lot of anger about church, a lot of anger about, about how Christians have treated him. And I listen and allow him to talk, but I always try and like when he says statements like all Christians, I always just try and go, what well, does that include me? And he always says, well, you don't count. 
and I just leave it there. Because like maybe my, my role in his life is just to be a source that can continue to keep that question mark there of maybe I can't throw all this out. And so, Pastor Todd, if you could, uh, could you pray as, as all of us are walking through doubt, we're in this together. Could you pray to kind of conclude our time here together? Hey, Father God, thank you for being such a big God that you can take all of our doubts, take them all and just answer them. And may we see how big you are in our lives. And Lord, we just thank you for your son who was obedient to the cross. Jesus, thank you for the power of your name, for what you've done on the cross. And Lord, there may be some today that don't know who you are. I pray, Lord, that they would turn their life over to you today and make it all glorify you. Lord, we love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' mighty, powerful, and effective name that we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching and checking us out. Hey, I want you to know we go live every Sunday. So I would love for you to like and subscribe to make sure that we can stay connected together all the time. I'll see you next time. Bye.